Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you a free. From that point on, uh, these same believers, these same believers rage at him to the point that when it's all said and done, verse 59, they take up stones and throw at him. It's been the problem in John, hasn't it? That we've seen over and over and over again. John, you know, you, you tell people, just believe in Jesus Christ. And what does that mean? John's showing us, but he's often showing us again by what belief isn't. And a lot of people believe in Jesus for their own agendas, you know, but they don't believe him as a, in him as a savior from what? Their sins. Okay? And uh, that's what's happening here. Jesus, he doesn't want that kind of following. And that's why you study the Gospels, you know. He's pressing them as to what kind of belief they had in him because they would not accept his, his, his clear claims. And uh, in other words, as soon as he called them to believe in him as a savior from the bondage that they're in, they're furious. What are they going to say in a minute? We're not slaves. We've never been in bondage to anyone. Well, what does the Bible teach from beginning that we are in bondage? What did the Exodus teach Israel they were in bondage to? Sin. The bondage in Egypt was symbolic of the bondage spiritually that we're all in under the devil and our sin. And that's what this is all showing us here in this next section. So, you know, how does he address the problem of this kind of false belief? Well, what, what he says here is he says, he says it in three different ways. Uh, look at verse 31. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Again, verse 37. And uh, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because, here it is again, my word has no place in you. And then verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you're not able to listen to my word. So notice it. Abiding in the word, they have no, there's no place for the word, and they're not able to listen to the word. What's he describing? <coughs> He's describing tonight... Three things about one's relationship to the Word. Um, and this is what marks true belief. In contrast to this false. This is how he's confronting false belief. Okay? False following. So notice what he says. If you remain, if you abide in the Word, you are, you are my disciple indeed. Really powerful. Abide has the sense of hold on to, Remain in it. I even like the translation, if you stay with my word. Okay, you are a disciple. Okay. Um, in verse 37, he gives another aspect to that. He says that the Jews are giving no place to the word. It means, it means to have room for the word. So the word for place or room means that the word makes no headway. It has no place in your life. It doesn't take hold of you. There's no pro progress in the word, okay? Um, and, and as if Jesus is, is saying, I'm showing you how bad the problem really is, it gets progressively worse. Not only are you in bondage to your sin without a savior, but you aren't giving any place in your life to the one thing that is the power of God to deliver your soul from death and, and, and save you. It's, it's the gospel. It's the word. And um, this is what he's, he's calling them to. Now, this is one of the great keys, you know, that marks true faith. What's some of the fruits of, and I talk about that, which follows the believing heart in the true follower's life. What is it? Um, I always say you know true following by the love for the word. Um, and that's what Jesus is ultimately describing here. Has Jesus been saying things that are easy along the way? No. Um, but they're the most beneficial things for the soul. So, you know, what is us, uh, for instance, 2 Thessalonians 2 talks about this um, time of apostasy that's coming. And it says, those who will be carried away in the apostasy are those who in the present did not receive a love for the truth. That's 2 Thessalonians 2. 
Okay? Um, how about this verse? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for this, themselves teachers. So there will be a period that those who formerly did listen to sound teaching won't anymore. Not good, is it? That's what he just said. There's a time coming when those who once endured it won't endure it. Um, uh, there's, a, there's many more like this. Um, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and which you stand, by which also you are saved if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. So, there he says plenty, the fruit of faith is endurance and loving that word of God. That's the key to the Christian life. Everything is about this word that the Lord has, has given us. You know, just a few more. Um, Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you've received from me in faith, love, uh, which are in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 1.13. 2 you know, um, Thessalonians 2. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. Okay? So uh, you keep coming across this, that, that, that the distinctive mark of somebody who's going to be persevered by grace is that what? there's a perseverance and love for the Word in their life. And that's what he's describing here, a progression in that Word, so that he holds on to the Word, and he, he loves the Word, and he wants to grow in that Word. doesn't mean we have, don't have dry times, okay? Because <laughs> that's just the reality, isn't it? Um, but he's saying that in the whole picture, the Christian is growing in the Word. And that's the whole parable of the sower, isn't it? Jesus says you, you can't understand any other parable unless you understand that parable. And he describes a sower who goes out and sows seed. And what is that parable about? Hearing the word. You know, the first one, the seed lands on the path, and what happens? The devil comes and takes away what was heard. You know, the second one um, is among um, uh, rocky places. It springs up quickly. The seed is sown. The word is preached. And immediately people spring up with it. But what happens? What does he say? The um, tribulations of this life come and immediately they're gone. And then you have the, the, that seed which is sown among thorns. That what happens is, is that it hears the word, but it doesn't grow at all because the cares of riches, uh, the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word so that it becomes unfruitful. And then he describes those who hear the word and what happens in their life. They bear fruit. <laughs> some 630, some 60, some 100 fold. It's all by grace. Point is, is that the word is heard and it's bearing fruit. That's why Jesus was constantly saying, a bad tree bears bad fruit, a good tree bears good fruit. So here he's, he's, he's describing this by the place of the word in, in us and that's what's not happening with these people. They don't listen to the Word. How do you know you listen to the Word? I've always said, do you love hearing the Word? You know, do you have a desire to grow in the Word? If that's there, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, um, He's done something wonderful for you. And I, I believe that's, you know, isn't that evidence of coming to a Bible college? You know, I just, it's wonderful, you know. The Word dominates the heart, and it's your great interest, you know. To want to, um, to want to do and to, to, to follow that word. So Jesus is describing then that freedom that that life brings. You know, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. What's the truth? Remember what he's going to say to Pilate? What is truth? My word is truth. You know? And uh, so, you know, uh, that's the freedom that... That now, you know, what is freedom? I love how one pastor said it. That one is free not when he can do what he wishes to do, but when he wishes to do and can do what he should do. <laughs>